it took a few more years. They started putting MRIs on other primates. And they started to see when a primate would see another primate observe their pain or their pleasure or their angst, the same neurons would light up as if they were feeling it themselves. Then they put it on humans and found the same thing. They discovered mirror neurons across the primate kingdom. Now we think the elephants have them because of self-identity, maybe even dogs. We've discovered empathy wired in to social creatures, and every parent knows this. When that little baby's looking up to you, they're looking to belong, they're looking for intimacy. And then around two years of old, they explore, they're looking for universality. Intimacy and universality. We seek universal intimacy. That's the awe and angst of the human race. Empathy is a very strange phenomenon. It's what makes civilization. To civilize is to empathize. If I empathize with you, it means I've created enough sense of myself that I know I'm a person. I'm individual from my tribal connection. I feel the angst of my life. I'm going to live and die. I can smell my mortality. And then when I feel your plight, your pain, or your pleasure, I understand you have one time around. This is your life. And I try to root for you and celebrate and feel your pain or pleasure as if it's my own because we understand mortality, life and death, and each person's desire to flourish and be, correct? We can do it with a fellow creature. Many of us do it with our companion animals. As civilization becomes more complex, selfhood becomes more differentiated, and we can feel more of an ability to empathize across more diverse kingdoms. The good news, we are extending empathy now to the whole world. This younger generation is connected. When that young college student in Iran, who was a pre-med student, was gunned down after the Iran elections, remember? In 20 minutes on Twitter, an entire generation was in tears because they totally identified with this young girl. So we have the technology now that connects the human race. We can begin to extend this notion of civilization to an empathic civilization. If we have an empathic civilization, we're going to be able to reheal the planet. Because when we extend empathy to all of our fellow human beings and all of our fellow creatures as if they were ourselves, there's no more self-interest. There's only our united interest. We regain our sense of individuality because you can't empathize without being an individual. But we connect ourselves in a more integrated way. Does this make sense? So we need an empathic civilization to move a third industrial revolution. We need to retell the story, and it's the great urban areas that tell the human story. So in these great urban areas, you go back and not only build a third industrial revolution, but help us retell the human journey. We think human nature. We are born to be an empathic being. And if we're violent and aggressive and self-interested, it's because the initial attachment didn't connect. And everything else is a substitute. What we really want to do is we want the companionship and sociability of life. The worst thing you can do a person is ostracize them. So we need to build empathy in, and then we need to build a third industrial revolution out. I'll leave you with this thought. How many took your National Geographic DNA migration test? Pretty interesting. Pretty cool, right? $100, go up on National Geographic, they send you a kit, you take DNA from your cheek, you put it in the kit, send it back to the genetics lab. My wife and I, my in-laws did this. They send you back your results, and based on your genetics, they tell you where you migrated from to the beginning of history. It's wild, right? But what's more interesting, I'm going to save everyone else the $100. You don't mind, right? Apparently, I didn't know this, our geneticists say that 175,000 years ago in the Rift Valley of Africa, there were 10,000 of our ancestors, men and women, anatomically modern humans, walking the grassland. They located one woman. They called her the mitochondrial DNA Eve. Apparently, her genes passed everyone in the room today. The other ladies didn't. Huh? It gets more weird. Around 70,000 years ago, if I have it right, they found one guy. They call him the Y chromosome Adam, a fairly potent guy. His genes passed everyone in the room. The other guys didn't make it. So guess what? 6.8 billion human beings, we all came from two people, and the Bible got this one completely right. <laughs> Sometimes the great narratives in history are based on some, something we don't know about, but it's real. It could have, we could have come from hundreds of people, but here's the point. We're sitting there in all of our geopolitical divisiveness. The reason Copenhagen's going to fail, even with any kind of agreement, it's based on geopolitics and division and a concept of human nature based on self-interest and utility and pleasure-seeking. 
And if that's it, we're doomed. But we have to recapture the essence of what it is to be a social animal. We're wired to be empathic and sociable. We have to create institutions that are compatible. This third industrial revolution gives us a chance to create a new energy regime that's based on responsibility for the biosphere, responsibility for future generations, and responsibility for our fellow creatures because they have a right to be here with us or without us. The mission here with all the great cities in this room, I know you're frustrated, I know you're tired, and I know you're exhausted, and I know Copenhagen is upsetting, correct? On the other hand, the only thing I can say to you is you are the front line. You have to redouble your effort, no matter how difficult it is, and you got to go back there, and you got to win converts, and we got to take the local city, urban environment, and the civil society, and the business community, and create a seamless family to move this third industrial revolution online and to retell the human story so that our urban centers become the vital center points for a new renaissance a post-carbon era that can replenish this earth, save it for future generations. Good afternoon.